الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الغمه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سار على نهجهم مقتدى بسنتهم وهديهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are still continuing our series of خطبة entitled Immigration and Integration الهجرة والاندماج And we are trying to cover in this series the most important strategic work of our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions over the course of 10 years in the Medina. The work in building the Muslim community identity, the work in integrating, the work in da'wah and reform in all aspects of life, such as the moral, social, educational, intellectual, political, economic, health, environment, etc. And we will see also how the Prophet ﷺ was interacting with all the different groups of the Medina society, Muslims and non-Muslims while he balanced the preservation of Islamic identity, al-hifaz al al islamiya and citizenship. My dear respected brothers and sisters, in my last khutbah, we talked about the Medina's document, if you recall, as the first constitution in human history. And what, I and what it included from principles, rights, duties for all the people in the Medina society, Muslims and non-Muslims. And today, inshallah, we'll continue our series by talking about the fifth strategic project. This is the fifth strategic project, which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he carried out in building the social identity of the Muslim community. Social identity of the Muslim community. This project is considered one of the essential characteristics of the Muslim community and the nation of Islam, Ummatul Islam. And it is one of the reasons of its goodness, survival, and even continuity comparing to the other nations, among the other nations, till the Day of Judgment. This project 
is al amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar which is order what is right and forbid what is wrong al amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he drafted the medina document the medina constitution if you recall he made the issue of advising and advising it means basically al amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar it means ordering what is right and forbidding what is wrong he made it part of that document he made it part of that document he made it one of the duties of the society and the citizenship and the responsibility for everyone not only to the muslims to everyone who lived in the medina so he wants to make it as a society culture al amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar the document mentioned in the same article that talked about the financial independence of the jews in the medina wa anna baynahum an nusha wa an nasiha wal birr dun al ithmi dun al dun al ithmi wal qati'a that among them are advice and righteousness without sin so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this document he confirmed the necessity of advising and recommending the good and he made it as a social responsibility and if we look in the quran and some of you they will ask why why we keep looking in the quran because as you know the quran is our constitution as a muslims from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty and it's our reference in everything our reference in knowing what is right and what is wrong and also our reference in defining the principles the values and the morals in a balanced way the way that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined it to us in the quran you will find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this feature al amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar in multiple places in the quran so this will give us a better idea when we read it from the Quran to understand the dimension of al amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar. So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala the first thing he mentioned it as an essential characteristics for the best nation. Bi afdal al ummah, khair al ummah. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best nation ever raised for people ordering what is right forbidding the wrongdoing and believing in Allah. So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse in this ayah defined for us the requirement for the best nation. It does not rely on gender, race or color or language, but rather it got it got acquired by three main characteristics. The first one is ordering what is right, al-amr bil ma'ruf. And over here it means any form or any type of right. The second thing is forbidding the wrongdoing and over here and nahi 'anil munkar which means stopping and fixing any wrongdoing regardless of its size small or big and regardless who did it muslim or non muslim we should fix it and the third thing is the belief in allah al iman billah which means that these actions that we are doing al amr bil ma'ruf and nahi 'anil munkar it means that the first starting point for it the intention it should be for the sake of Allah and faith in Allah and compliance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command and the second thing it told it is telling us over here that the source in defining what is right and what is wrong especially when we are talking about the values and morals is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah is the book of Allah because you will see fixed definitions over there does not change with the time and because there will come a time when the right becomes wrong and the wrong becomes right and the values and morals will change and we are experiencing that right now we are experiencing that right now and this is why the belief of in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al iman billah linked to al amr bil ma'ruf and nahi 'anil munkar in this verse and in this verse subhanallah you can see clearly that the nation of Islam is a proactive nation the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it in this ayah kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf so they have they are an ummah of action and they are proactive and the muslims community wherever they go and they travel they are a proactive community and they should be a proactive community they do not stand silent on the sidelines regarding the issues of their time rather they take a clear position clear position to support what is right and forbid the wrongdoing and help the oppressed wherever they are another perspective and benefit that we can see from al amr bil ma'ruf and nahi 'anil munkar when we read the quran and i will mention over here three verses to 
to give you another per picture and perspective. The first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that as individuals we have a lifespan. We live between Amar Ummati Ma Bayna 60, 70, 100 years. We have a lifespan as individual. Also the nations, they have a lifespan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلٍ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ And for every nation, they have, they ha has a time set. They cannot hasten it, nor delay it when it comes. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us for the cause of the nation collapse and death in another ayah. And simply, you will find it mainly in injustice, in spreading injustice, sins, and wrongdoing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, in the Quran, And those villages, we destroyed them, we destroyed for wrongdoing. This is the main cause, for wrongdoing. And we set an appointed time for their destruction. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented for us as a Muslims the solution and the guarantee for the survival of this nation to prevent it from the fate of the previous nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَىٰ بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ That your Lord and your Lord would not destroy the village unjustly if their people are acting righteously. Acting righteously, not righteous. Acting righteously. Yani a reformer. And there is a big difference between Salih and Muslih. Salih is righteous by himself, but he's a silent. He's not reforming the others. But the Muslih that is mentioned in this ayah, which is a guarantee for the continuation of the nation, is the person who is a reformer and who is good in themselves and reform the others. So as you see from these three verses, three, these, these three ayahs, that Al-Amr bil maruf and Nahi al-Munkar is the reason for the survival of nations. Also, Al-Amr bil maruf and Nahi al-Munkar is one of the noblest jobs. If you look at the job description, some, sometimes, sometimes we say, okay, being a doctor or having a PhD, this is a noble job because of the job description. The noblest job, basically, is the job of the prophets. And the core of the job of the prophet is Al-Amr bil maruf and Nahi al-Munkar. This is their job description. And since the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was our final messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, he transferred this responsibility from the Prophet as a person, he transferred it to his nation, to the Ummah of Islam. And he make it as a main character for this Ummah, to carry it out among all the nations until the Day of Judgment. And that's the reason of its lasting till the Day of Judgment. Because it's doing that type of job and that type of work. Also, Al-Amr bil maruf and Nahi al-Munkar, is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the support and victory. All the time we are asking Allah and making dua multiple times for asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala victory and, 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 and support. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us over here a direct equation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَنْصُرَنَّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ And Allah will support those who support Him for Allah is all powerful and mighty and the mighty Allah subhanallah in this in this ayah he promised the believers the support and victory in return of their support to Allah so how are we going to do the support to Allah basically by supporting his religion basically by supporting his book and giving the advice to the people and guiding them to this religion al-amr bil-ma'ruf and nahi al-munkar Besides, exercising Al-Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar will increase the sense of the brotherhood and the integration among the believers because they are working on the same project. And add to this, it will strengthen the individual and the community identity. And this is why I highly recommend to do open houses and to put our kids and our youth in the front line in doing the da'wah because at the end, it will strengthen their identity. The more that they defend that deen and they make the da'wah, the more stronger that their identity will be. Another crucial benefit for Al-Amr bil Maruf and Nahi al-Munkar is it is one of the main reasons for spreading and supporting truth, correct values, and justice. Besides, on the other hand, it will limit injustice and corruption among the people. And subhanAllah, when we talk about the spread of corruption and the wrongdoing, it reminds me with a famous theory called the broken windows. Al-Nawafid al-Maksura. 
theory called broken windows. And sometimes we, we bring like these things, not because we don't have these examples in the Quran, but it's good that al-hikmatu dallatul mu'min, to take these examples if it's aligned with what we are uh, teaching over here in the Quran and the Sunnah. It is one of the well-known scientific theories, the bro broken windows theory. It's one of the well-known scientific theories among the sociologists, psychologists, and even the specialists in, in, in criminology. This theory is important basically for countries, societies, for companies, families, and even individuals. The psychologist, his name is Phil, Philip uh, Zimbardo at Stanford University. He initiated the idea in 1969, and then its experiments were completed by two social scientists, George Killing and James Wilson in 1982. They executed the theory experiment on a larger scale, basically, and on multiple ways. The theory says in brief that regardless of the neighborhood that you are living in, regardless of the neighborhood that you are living in, whether it's rich or poor, if a building's window, if one of the building's window was broken and left broken without fixing, it is most likely that it will lead to the breaking of other windows in that specific window, in that specific building. Because the neglected broken window gives the impression that there is no supervision. And also it gives the impression that the people who are living in that neighborhood, they don't care. And with time, the chaos and the crime may increase in that area. And they called it the broken window theory. And they repeated that social experiment with abandoned cars, not only with the buildings, and also with the trash, with the waste. And they reached to the same conclusion. The conclusion that it says that when we neglect the treatment of small problems, it will lead to attract a bigger problems. And I think we are experiencing that in our life. The place where one bag of trash is thrown and not removed will turn into a neighborhood dumpster after a while. The organization in which someone is late and is not held accountable by his managers will corrupt the attitude of his colleagues in that organization and all of them, they will become late after a while, like him. And it will become an organization culture. The teacher who allows cheating once in his class, it will make everyone cheat. And the families where the dispute and conflict happen without addressing and resolving these type of minor issues immediately and from the beginning, it will lead to a bigger problems and unhealthy home culture. So back to our story. In New York, they adopted that broken windows theory in the 80s. And within 10 years, they transformed from a city in the 80s that attract criminals to a city that attracts investors and businessmen in 10 years, in the 90s. In New York, in the 80s, they, have a high, they had a high crime rate and they, ha they have full of bad graffiti and writing on the, on, on the building's walls. And the transportation system was terrible. The people actually, they were afraid to ride it because of the spread of crime and lack of cleanliness. And there was a lot of chaos. And some of the people actually, they avoid paying even the low transportation fees, which is $1.25 by jumping over the barriers. So New York concluded that neglecting these type of small problems will give the impression of weak supervision and general chaos. And thus, they encourages, it thus encourages a crime increase. So they adopted the broken windows theory in their solution and at that time, Rudy Giuliani was the mayor, and this is one of the reasons that, well, that's why he became famous. That was before September 11. So what they did over there, they enforced all the building owners to repair their broken windows, otherwise they will pay fees. Also they removed all and prohibited the drawings on the walls and buildings and transportation. And they prevent any, any train from operating with drawing until it got clean. And therefore, the people, they started to prevent anyone who started to yani, write on, on the walls of the train so that it won't stop working. And the police also, they put police on the checkpoints to prevent the people from jumping on the barriers and entering without paying. And anyone who jumped and, on the checkpoint and they got arrested, they will check his criminal record. And uh, on, on, uh, as a consequence, 
uh, they will be, be detained if, if uh, their, their, record, their criminal record was not clean. And subhanAllah, gradually, the rate of that chaos decreased and the crime rates began to demolish in, in, uh, or, or to decrease in, in, uh, in um, New York. And by the way, this theory, we can apply it on multiple levels and all the levels of relationship. We can apply it on our relationship with Allah. This theory, we can apply it on our relationship with Allah, with our spouse, with our children, our uh, company, organizations, and even our society. And when I read this theory, I wondered what does, why does yani, the human being do that as an individual and as a society? That if he makes a mistake and nobody, and, and, and he no, and neglect to fix it, and nobody stopped him, this will encourage him to go to a bigger mistake. I didn't find the answer in the, in the theory. But when I looked in the Quran, I found the answer in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described for us in the ayah, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ Don't follow the footsteps of the shaytan. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty, He reveals to us the method of the shaytan, the way that He approached each one of us. And this methodology, He used it from the time of Adam till the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He exposed that methodology, which is the steps methodology. The shaytan, in his process to destroy the individual relationship with Allah, or to destroy his relationship at his home, or at his, in his society, he will follow the system of steps. He will not destroy the building immediately. He will ask you, by asking you directly to demolish the building, or let's, let's say he won't ask you to commit adultery immediately. He won't ask you to drink alcohol, or to do theft, or to kill somebody immediately. This is like demolishing the building. What he will do, he prefers to start with step by step. And he begins by breaking one glass in that specific building, in that specific sector or that specific area. Until eventually the building is close of falling apart. And at that point, it is yani, be very easy for you to demolish it. And this is the approach of the shaitan. And this is why subhanAllah maintaining the broken windows immediately, it keep the relations healthy strong and long-term and not exhausting to their parties. And Islam, if you look closely to Islam, it's rich, it's rich with these type of tools and systems, the fixing systems. And you will find it in all kinds of relationship. Example, in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking forgiveness immediately after committing the sin and repeat that if even you commit the sin multiple times, repeat that time again and again and again. This is one of the techniques. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned in the hadith, وَأَتْبِعَ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ And follow the sin with a good deed. It erases it. تَمْحُوهَا So, as you see over here, Islam is encouraging the correct, to correct the mistakes immediately and fixing the broken windows so the shaitan will not move to the next level by breaking another window. And this is why this type of attitude is really yani, uh, uh, very hard on, on the shaitan to do that because you keep fixing it and not giving him the chance to go to the next level of the sins. In the relationship with the others, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said in a famous hadith, hadith لا يهجر المسلم أخاه فوق ثلاث ليال فيلتقيان فيعرض هذا ويعرض هذا وخيرهما من يبدأ بالسلام The Prophet وسلم, he said that the Muslim does not abandon his brother for more than three nights. This is an example. And Islam is subhanAllah full of these type of correcting systems. The best of them is the one who begins the greeting when they meet with each other. So as if over here that the best of them are, is the one who is faster to amend this broken window and this broken relationship, even if that one was not the one who caused it. And in the society, you will find that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he mentioned multiple hadith. One of them, as Imam Bid'an wa Sab'una Shu'ba, adnaha imatatu al-adha an al-tariq, that the Islam, that the Iman, that the Iman is, uh, more than 70 branches, the lowest in which it re removed the hard harm from, from the road. And it means over here yeah, that you will get the reward by removing any type of harm. 
not just the garbage, any type of harm, even fixing the windows, regardless who throw it and who caused it. And you will get an agent and reward on that. And for sure, Al-Amr bil Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar is one of the main systems that in the society that we have in Islam as a tool to create the society reform culture. All those examples that I mentioned over here show you the greatness of our religion, Islam. And it highlights the importance of Al-Amr bil Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar in building the nation's culture, reforming the societies. And that was the main reason that why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he put it in the uh, document, the Medina document, in the constitution. And that's why these are main things mentioned even in our constitution, which is the Quran, as a main description for the Ummah of Islam. أسأل الله عز وجل أن يجعلنا مما يحيون سنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم في جميع قلوب المسلمين على طاعته ونصرة دينه ومما مرجعهم في كل أمورهم كتاب الله وسنة رسوله أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا فيا فوز المستغفرين الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن سار على نهجه مقتدى بسنته مهديم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters as usual I will conclude my khutba the subject of my khutba about al-amr bil-ma'ruf al-nai al-munkar with a set of lessons learned recommendations and even some of the proposed project that is related to the topic of our khutba today in a way to transfer the type of abandoned meanings and sunnas and to move it from the uh, theoretical dimension to the practical reality. The first thing I recommend, the importance of taking the initiative in fixing the small problems. Don't leave it. Fix the small problems immediately. And do not ignore it. And especially in our relationship with Allah, and with our spouse, and with our children. And not to leave it to the shaitan. Not to leave it to the time. Some people, they use it, leave it to the time. This is, this is like putting the, gar the, 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 the dust underneath the carpet. Fix it immediately, not to leave it to the shaitan any room to, to move to a bigger problem. The second thing I also recommend, the importance of activating the feature of Al-Amr bil Ma'ruf al nahyan al-Munkar in you as an individual. Activate it, start to use it. You have the option and the full authority to do that, believe me. So it becomes as a natural behavior that you practice in home, organization, company, and society. And I urge before activating that feature, I urge before that is to read the Islamic adab and disciplines and the guidelines that related to Al-Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar. And please note over here, when I'm talking about Al-Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar, it's, it's not one direction, it's bi-directional. It's not just only give the advice to the people, also to have the tolerance to accept the advice. This is part of Al-Amr Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar. It's bi-directional. You have to teach yourself to accept the advice from the others. Whoever gives you the advice, even if your son is giving you the advice, even if non-believer is giving you the advice, and it's correct, take it and follow it. Also, I highly recommend conducting special workshops about Al-Amr Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar. Disciplines regarding the disciplines, tools, and creative ways to apply it in our society, in our family, with our spouse and kids, with our society, especially here in Canada. For example, one of the ideas, the neighborhood day. Why we don't do a neighborhood day? Like in a quarter base to give, let's say, a gift or a food to our neighbors who are non-Muslims. This is a way to Amr Maruf. And also open houses. I am actually Yani recommending, highly recommending that all the mosques they should do open houses in a quarterly basis for the neighborhood in the area because it's a da'wah, it's not just like uh, a reaction we wait for another September 11 to happen to do that or another Islamophobia to do that we shouldn't be reactive, we should be proactive and it's good, this is a good area where we put our youth in the, in the front and teach them how to do the Amr Ba'ruf and Nahi Al-Munkar and Mwaki Da'wah and this is to, yani to, uh, to enrich and to strengthen their identity, Islamic identity. Besides cleaning the neighborhood, Imatatul Adha'an al-Tariq and removing any type of dirt or any type of damages in the neighborhood. 
all these are different type of, of, of projects that I believe if we do a workshop, you can create a lot of ideas and we can um, do a lot of initiatives. Also, the final one, I highly recommend to do another workshop to discuss what is happening right now in our society from changing values and ethics and the way to fix it and our role to reform it. أسأل الله عز وجل أن ينفعني وإياكم بسيرة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأن يجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسن إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا من بيننا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم اجعل خير أعمالنا أواخرها وخير أعمالنا خواتمها وخير أيامنا يوم لقائك اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذ وأخذ عزيزا مقتدر فإنهم لا يعجزون إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما بصام وأقم الصلاة